In module number five, we're still going to talk about the MX in, uh, as a gateway, and we will cover MX and dynamic routing and SD-WAN. So the agenda for this module will be talking a little bit about MX as a VPN concentrator, and then we will move to how to configure OSPF and do the neighborship and exchange some routes. And then at the end of the session, we'll talk about SD-WAN and how to turn on these features. So let's get this started. So I do have an MX5 here connected to the LAN side of my Juventus data center uh, network. Uh, this MX, we need to set it up in VPN concentrator mode. And I need this MX to exchange routes with my uh, switch that I have here. So I have a Cisco switch that this MX is connected to. Um, so what I need to do here is maybe create another VLAN, exchange routes between this MX and that Cisco switch. Uh, and I need also to inject this new route into my side-to-side -side VPN. So I need these sites to be able to reach out to the new subnet that I'm going to create here in the Cisco switch. And of course, on the other side, I need the Cisco switch to be able to kind of like learn all the LAN subnets that I have in my organization here. So that's the ultimate goal. Uh, what I've done, I've actually got one of the MXs already um, connected up. So it's MX400. I've put it in a new network. It's called VPNCon. I haven't done any configuration yet. So um, as you know, by default, the MX will be in a net mode. So the first step that I need to do here is put it in a VPN concentrator mode. And I hit save. So when I do this, I actually uh, put this MX to... Uh, to be in one arm VPN concentrator mode, which basically all the traffic gonna go through one single link. So this MX actually have only one link connected up, which is the WAN one. So as you know, if you actually wanna put it in path through and sniff packets, you can connect the LAN and the WAN interface and it will work as a bridge. Uh, if you actually put it in one arm VPN concentrator mode, then you need to connect the WAN interface only uh, and then that's all what you need to connect. So you can see here, the WAN interface is the only one connected and I do have the management interface to be able to access the local page. All right, great. So the second step that I need to do, I need to build my site-to-site -side VPN. So I need this new site to build tunnels with my site-to-site uh, -side VPN network. So they actually at least that device to learn the LAN subnets I have in my uh, sites. So I will set it up in a hub mode and I hit save. So I'm not sure if you've noticed or not, but once I hit hub mode here, I see a section with some dynamic routing. So if I go actually and do double check with one of the other MXs um, that in a, in a net mode, so let's go here and, and check one of the MXs in a net mode, I wouldn't see this section because this section will only be available when you put the MX in a uh, VPN concentrator mode or uh, a bridge mode. That's how you can turn on the dynamic routing feature. So if I go here to Man United, Man United is actually in a net mode. So you can see side to side VPN is enabled, but I don't have section here to do dynamic routing. So as of um, May 2017, this is the feature that we have. Uh, potentially, we might actually change that in the new firmwares. So at the moment, what we have is having the dynamic routing only enabled um, on, on the uh, MX in a VPN concentrator mode. All right, so now I'm learning all the subnets that I'm getting from Arsenal, Juventus, Man United. So these are the subnets we're getting from there. Um, what I need to do now is start to configure my uh, OSPF. So the first thing here, I'll put mm -hmm. my management IP address um, or the IP address I got from my um, MX1, the Juventus one here. So that one released an IP address to this one. And then I put this to be part of area zero so I can actually establish the neighborship. And that's all what I need to do for my MX to be able to establish a neighborship with my upstream device. Now what I need to do, I need to go to my switch and start to configure OSPF there. So I'll go here quickly. First I wanna check that I do have VLAN 33 to make sure VLAN 33 is there with an IP address, which is great. So I need to configure OSPF. So I go here, router, OSPF. I'll put the session to be one. Oh, it's um, IP routing is not enabled. Okay, so 
I will enable IP routing and I guess I should lose connectivity to that switch once I do this. I definitely did. Okay, so I'll just hop quickly from another switch that I have to that one so I can actually put the default gateway. Um, so I will log in here to my other switch. There we go. Great, so I have access now. So all what I need to do to get connectivity back, go IP route. Sixty eight two fifty five two fifty four. That should get me access again, hopefully. So let's rebuild the session. Oh, I put the IP right wrong. Um, sorry. So I will do this again, which is one ninety two. 168, not 9, 255, 254. And let's see. Okay, great. We got access again. Um, apologies for that. I actually didn't change the switch to be doing routing. So now I should be able to configure OSPF. Great. I'll put the router ID to be my management IP address here, which is no big deal. You can put any IP you like. And then I will put the network. Uh, which is 172.33.0.000.255, that part of area zero. And that's it. Now I should be able to see some sort of neighborship happening between my um, layer three switch I have here and this MX. So I configured now both. Normally it will take like a couple of um, seconds till they go through the negotiation process. Uh, so show IP OSPF neighbor it's in two-way now it's a really good indicator so it's actually now start to negotiate because it's connected to the LAN that's why it has to decide which is the DR and which one is the uh, BDR and the other whatever so uh, we'll give it another second hopefully uh, it will convert to full here we go so it's now full so uh, I'm now have a full neighborship with my uh, MX so this MX now can talk to this switch by OSPF. So because we enabled side-to-side -side VPN, I should be able to see now here all these subnets advertised. So if I go here to my switch and I do show IP route, the MX should um, advertise all my LAN subnets that learn from OS, uh, learn from side-to-side -side VPN. And as you can see from here, I have this subnet which is coming from my arsenal uh, site I have 77 which is coming from Man United and this is the um, client VPN that we created some time ago and it actually learned from Man United as well that's fantastic so now I can see the routes get advertised I can see all side to side VPN get advertised to uh, another network that doesn't have Meraki so how about if I do actually have a new subnet on that switch that I want to advertise to the side to side VPN so let's create a new VLAN I will just name it 34 and I'll give it IP address 172.16.34, maybe the 100. This is the IP address that I want to have. And I will put this in my OSPF as well. So I'll have network 160, um, sorry, 172.16.34. I'll put here zero and subnet mask. And then that will be part of area zero. So what we've done now, we've actually configured a new VLAN on my switch one. This VLAN I want to advertise to the MX and then let this MX advertise it through my side-to-side -side VPN. So uh, because we would not be able to learn this uh, subnets automatically to the MX, what I need to do, I need to go here and specify in the MX what subnets I'm expecting to be advertised from this uh, uh, Cisco uh, switch. So what I will do, I will go here to my MX, and there is a part here called local networks. That's where I need to define the local networks that the switch is advertising to me. So I'll say VLAN 34, it actually is supposed to be this subnet. And I hit save. So what I'm doing here now is I'm injecting this route into my side to side VPN saying, if you want to reach out to this subnet, I know how to get to that one. So just come to me. 
So now if I go to any other sites, let's go here, we have Man United. If I go to the routing table, I should be able to see the 34 subnet getting advertised now. So here you go. So you can see from here, I have 172.16.34 get advertised and it's through the VPN con um, uh, MX. So if I actually now from here try to originate some packets, uh, these packets should go to the MX5. So from here, if I try to originate these packets, it can actually go to my MX5. And then from MX5, it will need to go to the, the switch. So let's actually test the ping now and see if it's going to go through or not. So from here, I'm just going to go and uh, try to ping the new subnet we just created, which is VLAN 100. Hopefully it will work if everything is connected properly. Oops. Um, 100% loss rate. Okay, let's try to troubleshoot that. So what we've done so far, we said this switch has all the LAN subnets uh, coming from side to side VPN. So that device advertised this LAN subnets to that switch. So that switch already we've seen in the routing table that everything that we need to reach out to, we can actually go through that MX and then go out. Okay, from that device, if I'm trying to ping this subnet I've created here, we learned that from the VPN con MX, that one. And then that one, oh, I know what went wrong. So that one actually has the IP address on the WAN is configured with the default route pointing to this MX1. So on MX1, I don't have any route going to the VLAN 34. So what I need to do, I need to go to MX1, configure a static route pointing to my VLAN 34, so when the traffic actually comes all the way to MX5, MX5 will flick it to the default route, which is that MX1, and then from MX1 we'll push it to the switch, and then the inter VLAN routing is going to happen on the switch. So if you actually have the default gateway on that MX, the switch, of course, if you do have a layer 3 switch, potentially it will have the default route pointing to your layer 3 switch. Uh, then the traffic will just hit the MX5, it will push it to the switch, which is the default gateway, and then the switch will do the interview routing. So you would not need to do this step that I'm about to do now. Um, but it's a good, I think it's a good exercise to understand how the routing actually flow. So let's go to the MX1 now and have um, a static route there to point back to the switch um, when we actually want to uh, reach out to the VLAN 34. Uh, so all I need to do is go to Juventus, to MX1, and then I will go here and configure a static route there. So I'll create a static route, and I'll say this is for VLAN 34. Subnet of VLAN 34 is this. And the next hop will be the switch in this instance, which is VLAN 77. Uh, when, you create, when you create a static route, you can actually have this to be active all the time, even if the up um, link goes down, or basically if the next hop is actually offline, we're still going to have this static route there. Uh, or you can actually have this static route to be attached when um, only when the next hop is available. So you actually can have this rule there. So we'll do like IP SLA and monitor the, um, the, up, uh, uh, the next hop IP. Or you can actually specify a specific IP that we can ping to. And whenever we fail to ping this IP, then this static route will get removed. So I will just do it with the next hop. And then I will not advertise that into side-to-side -side VPN. That shouldn't be advertised through side-to-side -side VPN. And I hit save. So once that gets pushed to my MX, just l let's review what we've done quickly here. We've told this MX, if I want to go to 34, you go through the switch. And then from the switch, it will actually do inter VLAN routing. So when that device trying to ping the new VLAN, it learned that from the VPN concentrator. So push the traffic to the VPN concentrator. VPN concentrator will always push that to the next hop, which is basically MX1. And then we already defined in the MX1 a static route pointing to the Cisco switch. And then the Cisco will do inter VLAN routing. <laughs> Again, this, this step is unnecessary. If you're actually going to have the default gateway on this MX5 to be the switch, then 
the traffic will go straight to that MX and then will go to the switch directly and then you do the interview land now routing there. So hopefully now when I try to run the ping again, it will actually ping it uh, with no problems. Awesome. So you can see now it's 40 mil 4 milliseconds, 7 milliseconds, so the ping is going through. So that's basically how to utilize um, an MX to be in a VPN concentrator mode. And normally you use this to do route leakage. So you can see now I do have like a cloud of side-to-side -side VPN with multiple sites there. Uh, I actually use this MX to leak some traffic or some routes between the side-to-side -side VPN network and my um, other network that doesn't actually contain uh, MXs. So normally you would do that when in a data center kind of like uh, format when you have like multiple um, networks and you want to actually leak some traffic between these net networks, uh, especially when you have like a network using Meraki MXs. Uh, or you can actually do that with the MPLS. So you can actually rig the routes from the MPLS to the MX and, and vice versa. Um, the other feature or the other kind of like routing protocol that we start to support now, which is um, BGP. So I wouldn't go into the configuration part of it because it's uh, exactly the same as my um, OSPF. So it, it actually the same use case as OSPF, you can create um, side to side VPN with your uh, LAN connectivity or using you know the, uh, the WAN connection uh, to the upstream so you can actually go here and configure it the same exact way uh, so you can have your local AS number and then you have you know your neighbor IP with the remote AS number and then we establish either IBGP or eBGP and then we will start to advertise the route exact same way um, so this is in case you want again to have a data center architecture and start to use BGP to advertise routes between the links and of course to add redistribute that into the side to side VPN so this is not available to um, all firmwares. It's just uh, in beta at the moment. Uh, so um, you will need to get your firmware upgraded if you want to test the BGP functionality. So that's the first part of, of the session today is to talking about MX as a VPN concentrator and using MX and OSPF. The next section we will need to talk a little bit about SD-WAN. So most of our customers, they actually um, moving towards having hybrid networks. So MPLS, of course, is a great technology uh, that can offer you guaranteed bandwidth and, and uh, latency and backup drop and jitter and all these kind of things, but also comes with cost. So we found out uh, a lot of customers start to go to the hybrid model where you have MPLS and internet, or sometimes two internet, sometimes two MPLS connections. Um, but w what we found actually, customers are actually interested to use both links at the same time. They don't want to actually use one link and have the other one uh, sitting there doing nothing till something goes wrong with the primary link. So load balancing is, is a lot of demand for it, and that's what we see in the market. And using the MX can actually help with doing load balancing. So you can do um, polyspace routing. I can go and say maybe I want my YouTube traffic to go my uh, WAN one. And I go here and say maybe my voice traffic to go through my WAN2. And of course, whenever their failure happen, like let's say WAN2 goes offline, then of course all the traffic will start to go through the active link I have, which is WAN1. Um, so this is something, you know, traditional. This is the policy-based routing mechanism. Uh, but as you can see, you have to wait till the link fails so the actual traffic will get moved. Uh, but how about if the performance of the link actually is bad? So the link is still up, but the packet drops are really high. So this is where the performance-based routing will come into the game. So what the MX would do actually will monitor the performance of the links you have. So we'll look into the latency, packet drop, and jitter, um, and start to kind of like analyze it to see how good or bad the link is performing. And based on the performance of the link, we can start to move the traffic across. So let's say you know I want to push my YouTube traffic across the link I have uh, a lower latency or I have enough bandwidth there. So you can actually use the MX to monitor uh, the latency and packet drop and jitter and you can set the threshold and then move uh, or push the traffic to the link that has lower latency. Uh, same thing for voice. 
So instead of waiting till my primary link fails for voice to move the traffic, I can actually monitor the link and see the performance of the link and move the traffic when the performance actually um, become bad on my link. So with this, you actually have a load balancing. You can do policy-based routing to specify which traffic to go where. You can use the performance-based routing so you can actually move that traffic between the links you have when the link is performing poorly. That will help, of course, with doing application optimization. So the critical application will always use the best link you have. And of course, you get full redundancy. Whenever uh, a primary link fails, you have the other link taking, uh, taken over. Uh, so this is the SD-WAN functionality that we offer. Um, and uh, what I want to do now is like I want to start to configure this in our topology here. Um, so what I'm thinking is to go to the Man United one. And let's go and try to um, have some policies to say maybe uh, traffic going to a specific server, maybe to use this link. And we, let's say we're going to use WAN1. Um, let's say, you know, we're going to use WAN2 as our preferred WAN, or WAN1 as preferred one, and we're going to use specific traffic to go to WAN2. Uh, so let's play with this and see how it actually it's going to look. Uh, so I will just close this. Let's go here to Man United. Here we go. Uh, SD1 functionality or feature is actually available under traffic shaping rules. So I'll go here to traffic shaping. So first of all, you're going to notice that um, you can set the preference which link you want to prefer for all your traffic. That's without having any policies set yet. So I can go and say any traffic, maybe to go through my WAN2. That would be my default link. And I hit save. Uh, and whenever WAN2 fails, traffic will move to WAN1. There is a feature here called load balancing. If I turn this on, Basically, what's going to happen here is um, we will look into the bandwidth settings you have on your WAN links, and then we will do load balancing or distribute the traffic between the links based on the bandwidths. So for example, if it's like 250 and 250, then it will be half and half. So we send 50% of the traffic to the WAN1 and the other 50% to WAN2. Um, if, for example, we have 10 and the other side have um, maybe 90, so it'll be a 9 to 1 ratio. So it really depends on the WAN bandwidth that you set up here that will dictate how much uh, traffic we're going to push to each link. So let's disable it for now. And here I can start to set up my policy-based routing. So what I want to do, I want to say um, traffic coming from any source, I would say go into this specific destination, which is a public server, uh, to use my WAN1. So that's basically the policy-based routing piece. So what I'm saying here is if I'm trying to originate traffic from this computer going to a server on the internet 4.2.2.2, I need to use WAN1 as my preferred path and have WAN2 to work as a backup. And for any other traffic, to use WAN2. And of course, whenever a failure happens to this WAN, all the traffic will get moved to WAN2. So that's basically what we said here in this policy now. Um, so what I want to do, I want to go to my server here. So I do have JPerf um, enabled on this computer. So I'll just use it to generate some packets and see how it goes. So the server IP will be 4.2.2.2 um, because I don't have control over the server. So I'm going to send only UDP traffic to go through. Um, let's say we'll change this a little bit to make it bigger. And potentially, let's have this for 300 seconds. OK. So once I hit Run now, I should be able to see the traffic going through my WAN one. So let's have uh, packet capture actually is a key feature that we can utilize here to see the packets, how the packets actually flow. Um, so uh, the beauty of using the Meraki MX is that you can do packet capture on the dashboard. So we, what we said in our policy here, we said for 4.2.2.2 to use WAN1, not WAN2. So let's go and first check the traffic to WAN2 when we enable this. Let's run iperf now. OK. 
Okay, so we start to generate some traffic through. Um, and I just kind of like limit the result to only focus on host 4.2.2.2.2. So if everything actually configured correctly, I shouldn't see any traffic going through here to 4.2.2.2.2. Even though we said that all the traffic should go to WAN2, unless it's uh, traffic distant to 4.2.2.2, it should be using WAN1. So as you can see now, we can't see any traffic going through. Um, because, you know, all the traffic now should be going to WAN1. Just limit this down to be a little bit little shorter. So when I hit now into Net1, I should be able to see traffic going to this server. And here we go. So you can see all the traffic now is distant to 4.2.2.2. And it actually pushed. So this is just to give you an idea how it actually works. So what we've done, we've set a policy to say, Everything to go to WAN2, unless it's distant to this IP, should go to WAN1, and done. All right, now, what if I want to actually do performance-based routing? So let's set a class to say, I will name this class test. I will say uh, the latency shouldn't go maybe beyond um, 5 millisecond, and the maximum jitter should be, let's say, 5. Packet drops shouldn't go beyond 1%. And I hit save. And then I will say, please apply this to the traffic. I will say this is any. Apply this to traffic that sourced from any source, any port, but it's actually going to my other PC that I have on the Juventus data center on at any port. And I add this expression. So here, I just defined traffic distant to this subnet, to any port. I want to actually attach this load balance. So first of all, you can see that I cannot select the load balance feature because I'm not enabling the load balance feature here. So in order for me to be able to enable this, I need to go here and enable load balancing first. So when I turn this on, I can start to play with the performance-based routing policies. So I go here now. I should be able to see the class I've just created here. And here we go, we can see test. And then I hit save. So what we've done now, we've told the MX, I have a threshold for the traffic distance to this subnet. I don't want to go beyond 5 millisecond latency, 5 millisecond jitter, and 1% packet drop. So when I try, to, I try to push traffic from here to this PC, you know, I will always use the link I have that has best uh, latency and packet drop and jitter that not going beyond 5 millisecond and 5 millisecond and 1%. Uh, and of course, I can create as many classes I want and apply it to different kind of like uh, traffic uh, that I have. So now, if I go here to my iperf and change the server IP, let's go and have 172.16.33.2 and start to generate packets to go going to this server and see you know, how the MX will make decision how this traffic will be routed. So first, I'll just check quickly if the MX is up to date. So by the way, when we push the configuration, you will see here there's a config um, report or config kind of like uh, update. It will tell you if it's up to date or still out of date and waiting till uh, the MX get the configuration. So normally it takes like a couple of seconds, not more than this. So it looks like it's up to date. Now, what I want to do, I want to go and check what's happening from the WAN connection, how actually the MX is making decision. So if I go to side to side VPN, uh, you'll find there is a, a section here called uplink decisions. And this in uplink decisions, it will tell you when the traffic actually get moved between the WANs and why, right? So that will take just uh, a minute or two to collect some information. But just bear in mind now we're pushing the traffic through so we actually have the traffic going now to the preferred or the best link that we have. So I'm just going to give it another um, couple of seconds just to make sure that we collect some good reports and uh, it starts to populate in here. Great. So from there, you can see now that I have this one actually is pushing the traffic. So this is actually the server that we have. So we're pushing the traffic to WAN1. 
not when to. So you remember that we said the default for us is when to to any packet. So if I go here back to my MX and go my traffic shaping. So what we said here, we said anything should go to when to except the traffic going to this server, uh, which means the traffic going to 172.16.33 falls under the default, which is go to when to. But because we set up this policy here, with uh, the MX found out that actually when one is performing better. And here, it gives you a, a good idea about the um, performance of the link you have. So this is my WAN1 and this is my WAN2. So if I go here and I click on my WAN2, you can see the threshold that we put is pretty low, like 5, 5, and 1%. So you can see here the latency, uh, you can see the jitter, and you can see the packet drops. And then if I look into WAN1, And here you can see, you know, the latency is a bit better and jitter is better and loss better. And that's why we move the traffic to uh, WAN 1. So from there, you'll be able to see the traffic kind of like jumping between WAN 1 and WAN 2. And it tells you here the reason of why it's jumping. So some of them, uh, because of the, you know, the policy that we applied, which is basically here saying test. Uh, and some of them because maybe there is a link failure or even because we set up the lab load balancing to, to run that for us. So this is how you can actually see how the MX making the decision. By the way, you can get notified when the link actually, uh, or when the traffic is moved to the secondary link. So we can actually send you an email notification saying, please um, have a look in your WAN link because the traffic now is moved to the secondary link. Um, so this is all what we have for this session. So we talked about how to configure the MX in a VPN concentrator mode, and we covered how that actually will work uh, with uh, enabling OSPF and exchanging some routes. And then we went through the SD-WAN and how you can use the SD-WAN to do load balancing without using any dynamic routing, as you've seen. Uh, we only use the policy-based routing and performance-based routing to do that. In the next section, which will be the last section for this training, uh, we will cover having the MX in a VPN concentrator, but using this with wireless. Uh, and then we will talk about the new features uh, and cover the virtual MX that we have released in AWS. So stay tuned for that.